establish easy. Hi, so I want to talk about polynomial space completeness. So what is polynomial space? It's just defined to be the union over all integers k, or really any real number, at least zero, of space n to the k. So this is a polynomial in n, and we're taking the union over all k at least zero. So this is capturing polynomial space. And why would you want to study this class? Because we want to think about what kinds of problems we can solve with only a very small amount of space. Lately, this is not really probably the best definition because we think of n squared as being inefficient, like bubble sort. So this is just a term that was coined up a long time ago, but is still worth studying. Most people in complexity theory study lower classes of space, like linear space and quadratic space. But here we're going to look at polynomial space. And one thing that we can prove pretty quickly is that P is a subset of NP. We've already known that so far. But NP is actually a subset of P space. So any problem that can be done in non-deterministic polynomial time can be solved with a polynomial amount of space. And the way that you prove this is actually very easy. All that you need to do is to find any example of an NP complete problem, like SAT, for example, that can be solved in a polynomial amount of space. So let's look at that particular example. If I show that SAT is in P space, then we are done because any particular problem, other problem in NP that you like, since SAT is NP complete, we can just take that other NP problem and reduce it to SAT and we can run the polynomial space solution for SAT, assuming there is one, and then we can get the answer for for the other NP problem because the reduction only took polynomial time and hence only took polynomial space. So how do you prove this? Well, all that you do is you go through all possible assignments of variables in the formula. There are two to the n possibilities. What you would do if you were not smart is you would write down every single one of the assignments and then just evaluate the formula on each one of them. What you can do instead is to write down one assignment, evaluate it, if the formula ends up being true, then obviously we're done. Otherwise, erase the assignment itself and then rewrite down the next assignment. And so therefore, we will never use more than linear space in writing down the assignment. And maybe the evaluation of the formula takes an additional linear space as an example. But in fact, we can even show based on that that SAT can be done in linear space, which is pretty dang cool. But uh, here, that tells us all that we need. We just need to show that it's in polynomial space, and that's all that we need. So NP is a subset of P space. And unfortunately, we do not know whether these containments are strict as of the recording of this video. With Knowing my luck, five seconds after I upload this video, it's going to be solved. But um, if you're watching this in the future and it's been solved, put it into the comments down below so that I can see and maybe make an update. And we actually don't even know whether P is strict from P space. In fact, all that we know, P can be equal to P space, although there's a whole lot of heuristic evidence to show that that's not true. Anyway, we want to know what is the hardest problem that can be solved with a sufficiently small amount of space, polynomial space. Then we can actually invent a notion called P space complete, kind of like NP complete, but it's complete for P space. The idea being is that we want to have a problem that is super duper hard for P space, and it's the hardest problem that can be solved in a polynomial amount of space. So the notion of complete in this sense is going to be that it's in P space. If you're complete for the complexity class, you better be in the class. Um, but then we also have that every P space problem will poly time reduce to it. We don't want poly space here because that's the amount of space that we're allowed and that's not going to really help us all that much. So we want something that's strictly less or we believe to be strictly less than um, the amount of uh, resources that we're allowed to use. So we're going to use polynomial time. And this notion right here is what is known as, as you might guess, P space hard. So to show that something is P space complete, all that you have to do is show that it's in P space and it is P space hard. So for an example, if we happen to show that SAT is P space complete, then we can show that NP is equal to P space. So if SAT is P space complete,
then NP equals P space. And this pretty much comes directly from the uh, definitions here. So if it's P space complete, it already is in P space because it's in NP and therefore, since it's a subset, therefore is in P space also. So if we know in advance that it's P space hard, then that means every P space problem can poly time reduce to set because we know that it's P space hard by assumption. And so therefore take any problem in P space that you're concerned with and do the poly time reduction over to set and we know that it can be solved in non-deterministic polynomial time. We already know that. That's actually true. And so therefore, any p-space problem that you're interested in, convert it over, run the non-deterministic poly time algorithm on SAT, and then now you have an NP algorithm for the p-space problem that you're concerned with. So that means that p-space, any problem that you want in p-space, can be solved in NP time, and so therefore P space is a subset of NP. And because of the fact that we don't know whether NP is equal to P space or not, this fact is obviously not known. And for evidence that we're gonna see in the future videos that I'm gonna make, this is probably not gonna be true, but um, it very well could be true. And in fact, um, one notion that we should be very careful with is that the P and NP are dealing with time, whereas this is dealing with space. And by the ehrman chelep cheney theorem, we know that non-deterministic uh, classes, of space classes, are closed under complement. Whether that's true for time, we actually don't know. So theorems about space are, at least for, for what we believe, are different than the ones for time. And so therefore, maybe this is true, maybe it is not true. We are actually not 100% sure on that. But if you can prove it, please send a note to me and then we can maybe write a paper together. <laughs> All right, so hopefully that was interesting. Leave thoughts about P-Space and P-Space completeness in the comments down below. As always, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. There are many other links in the video description if you want to support the channel further. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. That was easy. That was easy. That was easy.